So designing tables is hard. I was not prepared for that. Did you notice that this data set has got like tons of like missing stuff in it? Oh. Like all through it? It's like, I'm looking around. Is there any data around? I'm just seeing NAs wherever I look. It's like, I'm in a world of NAs when I look at this data. Uh, <laughs> but you got some good stuff here. <laughs> the stuff that's not NA. I don't think you're ready for this. I think I'm ready. What? It looks really good. I can read the code, sort of. <laughs> what? This is looking great. So it took me a while to get to like what, like like you said, right? Like what is the data? Yeah. Is there like data here? And like, how do I put it in a table? Um, yes. And I definitely approached this of like, oh, I use the tidyverse, so my data should be tidy. And then my first yeah. table was just one long column. Um, yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a common mistake. You don't want to be tidy when it's tables. Like, if your table is too long, you're not... Yeah. It's not useful. Yeah, exactly. And, like, it should be, like... It's almost like you're reading, in a way. Like, you can make mm. it ready for reading. And for a person to read, not for a computer to read. Yeah. If, if that makes any sense. I think it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but this is great. How'd you choose the colors? <laughs> Okay. It's, always, it's always a hard thing for me. I always like experiment with a million colors and I just don't, I can never settle on stuff. So this was a process. So I decided okay. I was going to look at tax status of California newspapers. And then okay. I was like, California makes me think of like summer, the beach, and yes. kind of like the, the vaporwave aesthetic. Yeah. Okay. I was just saying that these are va great vaporwave colors, like with the yes. salmon, you got like, you got like that, that blue, sort of turquoise. Yeah, so yeah, I'm digging, I, I'm digging it. I went in and I was like, I, so I looked for um, Vaporwave palettes. Basically, I pulled a color palette uh, and I used that. And then what's really, what I really liked about the color palette is with the scales code here. Um, so when I was doing, when I was using this for the color palette, you kind of give it your, uh, I don't know, your markers, right? Like here are my five yeah. colors. But then Sorry. because it is in interpolating, I guess, or interpreting. Yeah, it is. Inter it actually is interpolating. Yeah. yeah. So, they, they, yeah, just like in a graphics editor, those are the marks, like the, like the interpolation points, I guess you can say, like new color. Yeah. So it was great yeah. because like when I first got the table and I got the columns colored, I was like, oh, this is so much better than just the palette because I'm getting that range. So then yeah. what I did is I went in and I used a color picker in the browser to take, um, I think it's like this color here, and then I set the alpha to be really light because it looked funny, yeah. like the white wasn't a right color for the background. Um, and then what was really cool, I mean, I learned so much doing this, but being able yeah. to target all of my NAs and have a specific function to turn anything that was an NA a specific color was really, really cool. Because it was like, yeah, it is cool. now it, like my NAs match the background and it's not gray. It's not like, I mean, like this is a nice. jarring table. This red is atrocious. Um, I like it. I like it too. But like, it's not like, it's not, um, you know, to critique my own table, the colors aren't informative, right? Like 1977 oh. is not a dangerous number. It doesn't need to be bright red, right? Compared yeah, it's to like, like the 70s, it should be like purple blue or something like that yeah like <laughs> yeah like you know so the decade. yeah like i may be reversing the color palette or things like that but what i thought like what it, what i took away from this was how you can actually surgically select colors in gt and yeah. that was what i think um seemed like it would be really challenging and was probably a, i think it was probably the easiest thing i did was just be well besides like Great. pipe gt was like, oh, I want to, you know, as long as you know what something is called, you can target it with a color, which was yeah, exactly. super cool. Um, I did do that. Can I see the code for that? Yeah. So data color did one thing, but you did also, you have, okay, so you did for like different columns, right? Yeah. Yeah, years of operation, you're founded. Great. Yeah, it's kind of neat because like, I guess you have to do it that way because like there's different like domains, right? Yeah. So, like, if you did it like all together, it'd be like, Super so messed up because the data is like different. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So that was that was fun. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then so like that was where the font came from, was because 
Oh, I was, Google font. Okay. It's a Google font. So I was like, I don't want to deal with downloading fonts. I don't want to yeah. pay for font today. Um, you know, like use the yeah. fonts you have. So I was like, what's and this? And this is like, because everybody can use this font, right? Yes. As yes. As long as you have internet access, it's, it's kind of like super simple. Yes. As long as you have internet access, you can, you too can use this <laughs> incredible Yeah, I mean, it's not a hard high bar. <laughs> Just have internet, please. Um, uh, so, so I feel like you do a really good job with footnotes and source notes, and I just wanted to try them. Yeah, try so, them. If they don't work, then like at least you tried. I tried. This is pretty good though because you don't have like a huge, huge table, so you can get to the bottom without like yeah. scrolling forever. Yeah, and it was just like the, yeah. this is missing data. So yeah. it wasn't even I mean, that's, super that's helpful, good. but yeah. Yeah. And then because of the calls we've done, I was like, I can use yeah. Markdown. So I was yeah, like. Yeah, Markdown is awesome in these tables. Like, look at that. You just put in some links and stuff, yeah. which is great. Put in some links. I was like, yeah, let's, let's, let's get wild here. So yeah. this, but like, it was, it was one of those things where GT, I think is deceptively simple because sitting down to do this, I was like, oh, I'll be able to knock this out in like 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. And then I was like, I mean, you could, but you could, you know, it wouldn't be like this. It wouldn't be like this. You wouldn't yeah. Be this far. yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was really interesting. And like, just, you know, we've talked about a little bit about like preparing your data for a graph or a plot is very, is different from a table. But also then I was like, what would even be interesting for a table, right? Yeah. Because a table, you know, you're not necessarily creating a table for the same purpose as a, um, as a plot. Right. I don't yeah. want to like average everything and only have six rows. I mean, you, you have tables where you want that, but I was like, no, this would be like an overview. So like how granular do you get with the data? Yeah. So, it's like yeah. almost like it has like the same number of considerations, but they're totally different. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. So we have links. They're nicely styled. Yeah. Check out this underline. It's not right below the text. It's a little bit further down. I like nice links. It's also colored in a way, which is not defaulty. Okay. Because it wants to faulty. Okay, so I'm going to click on it, and it opens in another tab. Check that out. And it faithfully opens up. So this is kind of like a little catalog for these cool hubs that, you know, like, people have been, you know, like, looking at in this data set. Wait, so what I'm missing is you're yeah. going from that, like, nice summary table, and now we're scrolling down. What? Can you yeah. go through that, like, real quick? Like, sh can you show me yeah. again? What is, how does this work? Okay, uh, okay. The trick to having a frozen header and a frozen footer yeah. is to make multiple tables. Three <laughs> tables to be exact. It sounds nuts, but that's the only way you can do it because like every other way is like prone to failure. So these are you multiple tables. Yes, sort of like glom, you know, glom together with HTML tools. Okay, so there's a div here, there's a div here, another div, another div. So it's like three divs within a div. Uh, but yeah, this middle div is like basically the body, and I've hidden the column labels. You can totally do that. You can just see, there's another option in tab options, just like column labels hidden, true, and then it's gone. The only, okay, the only major thing you have to do, and this is like super, super important, is you have to set the widths of each column okay. in each of these tables. Otherwise, it just fails. You just get misaligned stuff, and it'll just look horribly bad. Um, but uh, that said... This is a pretty simple table besides that. But I did a lot of prep stuff. So I ran the table, that's no big deal. I put that in one file because I didn't want to see this again. So just source okay. that in. Fine. Okay. Another kind of thing, cool thing I did is like there's lots of different places that these papers come from mm -hmm. or, or publications. So I went to like uh, this census page and I tried to like have groups of states. Okay. So I figured, you know, like, you know, have to have some sort of like grouping. So I did like this, like West, Midwest, South, Northeast. Canada, because, you know, it's Canadian stuff in there, too. Uh, <laughs> and these are, like, maybe dubious groupings, because, you know, some people say that these are not actually a sound, but that's what I found in this publication, so I'm just sticking with it. Uh, so I have all these states, and the cool thing I want to do is, you can notice here, I wanted to group them together. Otherwise, they'd just be, like, sort of all over the place, right? You'd have, like, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted to be in a certain cluster of, you know, like, the same publications, or publications within a certain state within a group, which is, you know, South, Midwest, so on and so forth. First of all, all the URLs... It didn't look so great. Yeah. You know, I didn't even know some of them didn't work. I, I went through a process of just checking each URL. I made this function, it is a valid URL. So basically I'm just, you know, and it takes a long time. 
understandably, because there's lots of these, and it has to check each one and make sure it returns a 200. Okay. So I check all these, and then I just filter, and I say, okay, I do this. It takes like 20 minutes. Okay. Super long time. I just went away. And then I just sort of like wrote into an RDS file, read it back again. It's like a checkpoint. Never have to do it again. Okay. And then I do a bunch of link cleaning, get rid of like the HTTPS, get rid of some other cruft that's all in place. Some of these like links like lead to like donation pages or like contact pages or about. It's like, oh, just give me like the, the base URL. So I was pretty careful with my G subs here to just get rid of stuff that was safe to get rid of. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, a, a bunch of arrange. I used factor to make sure that these mm -hmm. uh, states were all in the same order as here. And then, yeah, I just capitalize a few things, you know, make sure it looks nice, uh, change a few things, you know, for profit, just FP. Mm -hmm. I like the short forms. It fits nicely. And then, uh, yeah, languages. I noticed there was some, like, inconsistency there. I just cleaned it up okay. to either EN or ES. And I made the table. So I made the links, obviously, like right here. In, mm -hmm. You know, like this, I used publication name, the, the cleanup URL. I made a pattern that made the link from HTML. If you use calls merge and you make a pattern, this is not escaped. So you can basically use this as HTML that appears. It's like a little bit of a loophole, but I'll take it. So basically this is column one, this is column two, we're repeating column two again, because we're just taking the link and uh, making sure it works. And okay. it's like an anchor tag. So that's great. Um, in calls label, got a habit to do this stuff. Super important if you want to do this sort of table, which has tons of content and other table bits around it, you need to set the widths of each and every column. As long as you have a few columns and you have everything, you're guaranteed to have everything set with the width. Mm. So it's like, you know, it doesn't like change with the content. It's basically what you don't want. Uh, I use lots of these opt functions as you do as well. Like, mm -hmm. um, you know, all caps for giving this cool look around. Um, like some of these names are super long. So what I done was uh, I targeted a bunch of these that were had lots of characters. I just guessed. You know, I just tweaked mm. this number. And basically, if number of characters is beyond thirty, we'll just change letter spacing, make it a bit more tight. This is like kerning, but not official kerning for the font. It's basically uh -huh. like this works at every single font. Same with the URL. Those are even longer in some cases, even though it's smaller. So I cut off seventy five. I made it even tighter in some cases. Um, yeah, so that's what I did there. And I even like fooled around a bit with some CSS. This is how I changed the uh, the links to be just a bit less defaulty and a bit nicer. I just changed the color to be dark cyan. Okay. And this really hard to find parameter, text underline position under, that makes it so like this line, the link underline is a little bit further away from the text. Kind yeah. of looks nicer. I do, I like that. It's This yeah. is like publication ready. You could put this in a shiny app. I think I could. And right? I could probably get away with it too. Yeah. Like you could put it in a shiny yeah. app. So now you're taking up a very specific amount of space, but you're still yeah. getting that level of interactivity with a scrollable table. Exactly. It's all about the divs, like making things work within divs. Um, so let me show you like the other thing I did, yeah. which is the top part. So what I did was I uh, I realized I had to like split it up, otherwise it would just not work, it would just be terrible. Uh, so what I've done is I took a lot of the code that was up here in this like main table, uh, but I took the parts that I needed. So here's a little trick. Here's a table with no rows, but has the same columns. You kind of need that, right? I thought, otherwise you can't do any of this stuff like without it. Uh, so I just copied that stuff, made calls label change. Like I, I kept that the same. I guess I didn't need it above because okay. I, I basically just want to hide it. So let me show you the thing where I hide it. Uh, it's basically, um, oh, it's not even here. I do the next, the next one. Okay. There's more. <laughs> There's so many layers to this. Like it's like an onion, which is like a huge onion. Yeah. So there's many layers to peel back. So basically, uh, so this is the same stuff as above there. We need calls with, just like before. I put this on there because this is essentially Chrome that goes on the outside. So you need to have this, you need to have a table font, you need the alignment because that affects the alignment of these as well. And then on the next page, which is basically sourcing in everything that came before that, which is basically those objects, I'm now using HTML tools and divs to create the different parts. So basically three divs inside one outer div. The main thing is that you just use tags div, and then uh, you put your content in. And the key way to get your like your GT table content out is just use as raw HTML at the very end. So this makes something, but this dumps it as HTML. 
Uh-huh. And this is totally cool with it. Like, this will just accept HTML. I like that. So you don't uh, have to write... So, like, let's unpack that for a second. You're saying you don't have yeah. to write any HTML to get HTML tools to recognize HTML. Yeah, the key thing is just, like, outputting it as HTML. If you just use, like, the GD table object, right now it doesn't recognize it as having HTML, so it's like, what is this? So if you just do this, you're, you're cool. And another cool thing you can do is... See the div, we have a comma past the HTML content. We, there's no argument there. We can put a style argument. And then you can use this helper function for HTML tools called CSS. And it just helps you like, like write the different style rules for the div, like the inline styles. Um, which is kind of nice. I can set the overflow. This is actually super key. Uh, you need to have like the height 500 px to make sure it does this. And you have to have these overflow settings set up like this auto so it scrolls. And then finally, let me show you the thing I did. Oh, yeah, right here. Column labels hidden. So we did that because we took that newsworks GT table and just, you know, tweaked it a bit to, so it wouldn't show the column labels again. So if you scroll to the very top of this, it's not repeating this. Right. It's just like the table part, like the body part. And yeah, that's the only tweak I made for the body, just making sure the column labels are hidden. Okay. I did the same thing. You can just take the top. Uh, so I called it newsworks GT top. Mm -hmm. And then um, I basically just made that hidden as well. I had some source notes. And then I like, did the same thing. I ended off with the raw HTML. And then I got this at the bottom because that's in another div. Yeah. I didn't have to style that. But then at the very bottom, there's a style like block. Mm -hmm. And this refers to the outer div, like the very first one. Okay. And you get kind of confusing with all the commas everywhere. Uh, but this is basically the style for the entire div, the outer div. And basically, yeah, I just made yeah. an order. I put some background color inside. Pretty nice. I, you can use this wherever. It's just like on color names. Yeah. Just for fun. Just remind me, remind me that I still have this function. It's in GT. So I did a bit of that. Made the, the border, you know, thick enough. And looks pretty sweet. 